The infamous Green Bubble Wrap Monster episode, The Ark in Space, Tom Baker's second story, or serial, depending on which side of the ocean you're on, for Doctor Who. This serial has a special place for me. It was actually the first full serial of Doctor Who that I had ever witnessed. So I'm still very fond of this story, and I can't wait to uh, get into this review. Sit back, enjoy, and don't forget to smash that like button, like and subscribe, leave me a comment, all that stuff, all these different creators love to say, please do so. The more people interact with my videos, the more I feel motivated to make them. These reviews are all going to have a very similar format. I'm going to start with a brief synopsis, what the episode means personally to me, talk about the story, characters, visual special effects, overall score, and then cut everybody loose so we're going to start with episode synopsis in this episode this is the second one for tom baker the fourth doctor he has taken harry sullivan and sarah jane smith on a trip supposed to be the moon um harry who's a new uh traveling companion cranked the dial and now they are into the far future on a space station Nerva Space Station. And the first episode of the serial really involves them kind of exploring the space station, running into some obstacles that include um, Sarah Jane nearly running out of air, and then the Doctor and Harry, a whole incident with a auto gun, uh, Harry trying his hand at some cricket, and a few other shenanigans. Interestingly, we do find out that the fourth doctor's scarf was knitted by a Madame Nostradamus. So, um, that's an interesting little factoid. Um, as that episode kind of closes, they come upon the cryogenic chambers. And in this is what is supposed to be the remnants of the human race. Uh, we come to find out that there were solar flares on Earth. They created the space station, kind of a utopia for what would be the survivors of the human race. And Sarah Jane had ended up being cryogenically frozen. So the Doctor and Harry end up reviving Byra, who is one of the leaders of this expedition, in a hope that she can help them to revive Sarah. Um, there's not a lot of characters in the story, at least not ones that are actually alive and talking. There's a, a lot in, um, uh, cryogenic sleep, but you have Vira, you have Noah, who's kind of like the leader of the, um, ship or expedition, whatever you want to say. And then you have Rogan. One of the things about this is the space station has been under attack by the worm, um, and it's not worm like, you know, earthworm, but the W-I-R-R-N worm, which is a insectoid alien. And really this story really kind of, in a lot of ways, inspired the later Alien movie. Um, and so it's very similar to that, to where they kind of have to go and infect these sleeping humans and cry junk sleep. And it lays their little eggs or whatever it is in them and then they eventually turn into worms themselves or the worms themselves hatch they don't necessarily the human host don't turn into it but um so you know throughout the story um noah's kind of leader he's a little uh kind of clashing with uh the doctor and harry early on recognition dune is missing there is no explanation the explanation is that the regressives have taken him but he eventually becomes Infected leads to the whole green bubble wrap incident, which we'll talk about under visual effects. Um, but he ends up becoming infected and then working to infect the rest of the people sleeping. Hey there, this is me talking from the future. I started playing back that video shortly before posting it after I was done editing everything, and it kind of dawned on me. 
um, it's my first one as far as the review goes. When it comes to synopsis, two kinds of people are going to watch this video. Either somebody that's seen the video or seen the serial, seen the episode, and they don't really need a synopsis because they've seen the damn thing. And then there'll be people that haven't seen it yet and maybe are trying to decide if they want to see it. And they probably don't want to be spoiled and me explain the entire episode. So I'm going to briefly kind of jump in here to say I'm cutting the rest of the synopsis. And I'm going to do a little better job next time keeping the synopsis a little briefer. And we're going to transition into what this story means to me. Um, there's a couple good things that was in the synopsis that I'm going to put back into, like when I talk about the characters and stuff. So, uh, you're not going to miss anything good, but you're going to miss some really boring me, you know, periods of me talking. So thank you. So as I said earlier, uh, this was the first full episode of Doctor Who I'd ever seen. Um, at the time I was maybe 12 or 13 years old. Uh, the Sci-Fi Channel, back when it was actually spelled Sci-Fi instead of the whole new thing, they were showing some classic Sci-Fi episodes. And so there was um, some playing of the Fourth Doctor's timeline, but they were done in the broadcast natural serial episodes, the 24-minute episodes. And so I'd briefly seen one episode, I think it was from the uh, Android Invasion, but I didn't really understand it. And so later, our local PBS station they played um, entire serials in an omnibus, omnibus format, so there was no break. It was just like a, a miniature movie, and so I watched The Ark in Space. And one of the things I kind of found remarkable, uh, one of the classic Doctor Who uh, Facebook groups, there was a question about, like, or posting about The Ark in Space, and a lot of people responded that was the first episode they'd seen. And I think it's kind of fascinating to me and it kind of makes sense because i think for people that didn't grow up with it especially people in america um where you know in britain it was a you know nationally known program and it was very popular among children in the united states it was probably much more popular with the older people especially playing on pbs um and so i think not something that you would go in with a lot of pre-knowledge about if you were to jump in, if the episode really wasn't a great episode, you probably didn't continue watching um, Doctor Who. But I think the Ark in Space is one that was very easy to follow on because Harry Sullivan was a new companion. So there was some exposition about things in the episode, which kind of helped to make sense. I also find that it's a really good episode. And so we'll find out in the uh, rest of the review part of it. But I, it was a big inspiration for the Alien movie. Ridley Scott actually worked for the BBC and almost worked on Doctor Who, specifically the first Dalek episode uh, back in, what, 1963, I believe. And so it's kind of fascinating that, you know, Ridley Scott, you know, had to have known about Doctor Who. And, you know, it's pretty popular among, you know, British people. And the fourth Doctor really increased after some viewership um, drops. They really increased under Tom Baker's run. So I think that there was definitely some knowledge there, and it definitely had some level of influence. I was hooked the first time I watched this. I thought this was great. I love classic sci-fi stuff, and to me, this episode really got me hooked in. And I became a fan and ended up watching several. Uh, and we'll get into that, but this was the first one I seen, so I never had seen Tom Baker's first episode, Robot, until actually many years later. It probably wasn't until I was like 20 or 21. I remember there was the old Media Play stores. They were going out of business. They had some of their VHS tapes for a very deep discount, and I got Robot, and I got a couple other ones, and that was the first time I had seen that, um, interestingly enough. And it was definitely much more of a carryover from the third Doctor's Air. And I'm not sure if that was the first one I watched. Maybe if I would have fallen in love with it as much as I did the Ark in Space. But story. To me, this is an easy 10 out of 10. Right there. Why? To me, this is the pinnacle of Doctor Who storytelling. And it's, like I said, it's likely had an influence on the Alien franchise. Um, to me, it just, it was great. It was a great introductory episode. Um, the dynamic I felt between Harry Sullivan, Sarah Jane, and the Doctor, you can kind of see some of the Doctor, um, 
a little his brashness towards Harry at times in this episode. He's a ham-fisted idiot. I said I was sorry, didn't I? What? Come out. And don't touch anything. It gets a little bit more extreme, especially by the time they get to the Revenge of the Cybermen serial, which is, takes place also in the Nerva uh, space station. At that point, it's a beacon. Uh, kind of leads to this moment that would probably be considered a little problematic now, where the doctor attempts to give her a pep talk. That's the trouble with girls like you. You think you're tough, but when you're really up against it, you've no guts at all. And... Yeah, you know, it's not uncommon. You see it in sports. You've seen a lot of stuff. It's not always going to help people to motivate them, let me just tell you. There's a lot of different people out there. Some people respond well to that sort of challenge. Um, myself, if somebody was to insult me like that, I'm going to think, I'm going to prove that guy wrong. I'm going you know, to do this, that. But not everybody does. Some people will end up having the opposite effect. And so, really out of character for the doctor to kind of respond like that. Um, and I think from what I understand from some of the uh, behind-the-scenes stuff, I don't think Tom Baker even thought that was in character with the doctor. He's very, he was new, and I can't remember off the top of my head the um, production order because a lot of times the serials were made in a different order than they actually aired. Um, but I think he even had some issues with how that scene was kind of doubted out. It works in this case. Sarah Jane is motivated. She ends up completing it. She calls him a brute. She has a few moments that are kind of funny. Cue this scene right here earlier in the serial. Hold me, old girl, again. And I'll spit in your eye. You know, spit in your eye. It's just, to me, it's hilarious. Um, you got to appreciate that. The characters, their dialogue, and just the episode in general for the characters, I say... 8 out of 10. I only say reason why I take a couple points off. Um, I always feel like Sarah Jane isn't always written the best. And this isn't because, look, it's not that because just damsel in distress, but there's an overwhelming amount of times where she's reduced to doctor, doctor. I mean, it drives my wife crazy. She will, you know, mockingly say that doctor, doctor. And I know the actress, Liz Slayton. Didn't want to be just a damsel in distress. And there's times where she's written very, very well. But there's also times where she has been reduced to that damsel in distress. Um, I think Harry, being the fish out of water, and plus his old fashioned stuff, I, I felt like he was better written. It tried to really portray that every man that if they were in this situation, kind of some of the dumb things he does, like pulling buttons and switches on a space station, which ends up what led to... Uh, Sarah getting locked in. Yeah, I did, I did just touch one switch. And, and almost suffocating. You have Noah, you know, kind of the quote-unquote base commander. He gets turned pretty quickly uh, and subverted. There's Vira, who is pretty reasonable. I mean, their society is very rigid, but she was pretty reasonable. She helps Harry and the doctor fairly quickly and quickly kind of adapts with what's going on. And then Rogan, kind of so forgettable that he doesn't even get to mention the Wikipedia synopsis. Um, I didn't think he did a bad job or anything. I just think that he wasn't given a lot to do until that final kind of sacrifice towards the end. Visuals. All right. This is 1970s BBC. If you're going to compare it to a Star Wars or even a more larger budget um, sci-fi thing in the United States it's not really fair I will say that the visuals for what the BBC was capable of I thought did a very good job I don't think this looks that bad I think they did a fairly good job This the model could have used a, probably a little bit of weathering to make it kind of the sense of scale because without that weathering it really just looks like a model hanging from a string um, so it could have been done a little bit better but I think it was a pretty adequate job. I think it was a pretty interesting space station. I think the set designs, the corridors where they walk through, I love that. I think the, you know, the idea with the floors and being able to see out into space and everything, the way you can link those. So it's really just one set, one corridor, but they can have the characters continue walking through it to give the idea of this much larger space station than what the set actually has. I think they did a masterful job of that. You know, as a 12-year-old watching it, you know, 
I got this impression of a very large space station. And even as an adult, even when I know the obvious, you know, kind of things when you're filming to make it perceived larger than it is, I still think they did a good job. Cryogenic chambers. Cryogenic chambers are phenomenal. To me, the use of the mirrors, the use of the multi-story, the impression, you get the impression that there are a ton of humans stored in here in cryogenic sleep, even though it's really just a small set with a certain number of people. Probably some of those are filled with mannequins for that matter. But the way the covering is, you really can't see very well what's inside there. Awesome job. So I think visual-wise, um, phenomenal. One complaint about the visuals, and I don't think it's a bad job per se, the timing, but the Warrens themselves, um, it was probably well done for the time period, but they really come across lifeless. There's a scene, I'm going to cue it now. Do you get any sense of fright when you watch that? You know, Sarah screams and turns around, but do you really get any sense of fright watching that? To me, it'd be like, oh, well, you know. So your suspension of disbelief kind of dies a little bit there because it just looks like a giant fly is coming at you, you know. Um, but again, putting this together for the time and the budget. Um, interesting thing with the Warren is it is seen once more uh, several uh, seasons later or serials later the stones of blood in this episode so there is a um deceased warren and this kind of uh galactic judges ship so they were probably up to no good interestingly enough that ship was from um a couple of centuries or even millennium in the past so this warren would have been at a far earlier point in their history than the one we see in the Ark in space. But it is an interesting callback. Did they intend for it to be the same Warren, or is it just some prop they found to throw in there? Who knows? But the fact is, it's a Warren. <laughs> so we're going to take it as is. Can't talk about visuals without talking about the green bubble wrap, though. It's terrible. It is very terrible. At the time, bubble wrap was a new thing. A lot of people didn't know about it. They really didn't put much effort into it except spray painting this bubble wrap green. <laughs> so it works. It, I mean, you know what it is. I mean, it still kind of works, but that was pretty lazy. That was pretty, pretty lazy. So that's why I'm going to give the visuals a 7 out of 10 because I felt like the one was a little lifeless. I felt like the green bubble wrap was just kind of lazy, but I think it's offset by the turret effect the corridors, the nervous station, and especially the uh, sleeping pods. Those sleeping pods are tremendous. So, big fan of that. Overall, gave the story a 10 out of 10, gave the characters 8 out of 10, and gave the visuals a 7 out of 10. So, overall, an 8.33. My personal recommendation is, if you have not seen classic Doctor Who before, start with this episode. This is a great entry episode. The Fourth Doctor is one of the most popular Doctors, even now, um, decades later, for a reason. Tom Baker is the definitive Doctor. He's, you know, a lot of people say their Doctor one came up with. For me, he's my Doctor. But I think he is the definitive Doctor. I think he just nailed that um, friend of humanity, but not human. And kind of a mysterious edge to him and I think it's one of those things that he wasn't even acting a lot of that was just Tom Baker in there and I think that's when you get some of the best performances when people just amplify their own personalities um, minus the part where Tom would get drunk and argumentative with people but um, that was kind of later when he got a little more uh, vocal about some stuff uh, so I appreciate it if you made it this far this is my first Doctor Who review. It is a work in progress. I want to continue. I'm going to work on some of my video editing skills. I'm going to work on some other stuff. But I appreciate you checking this out. Make sure to like and subscribe. Make sure to leave me a comment. Leave me some feedback. If uh, you're a big fan, if you like to get involved, I'm always looking to collaborate with other people, other creators. And I also do a lot of other content. Do a lot of simulation, wargaming, uh, videos of my cats, 
videos of uh, gym equipment, gym equipment reviews, some of the stuff me and my wife training. So a lot of different content out there. Check it out. Um, have a great day. Thank you. Bye.